So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? What are you talking about? Seriously, who are you here to see? I can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim, where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen him. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh, hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason, thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F, you know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't, so I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You could look for her there. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. I'll be back. See you around. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. Mmm. 
Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti... Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next-door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. That's Nishan- My next- She's playing- All right. Here I go. Um, um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. That's Nishanti. Sh my next. She's playing. Okay, you can do this. Right. Um. Crap. Calm down. Need to calm down. Right. This is it. Hi. Um. Can I? Damn it. This is not working. I can't do this. I just can't. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Oh, no, no. No trouble. Now don't go defending him. You'll just spoil him. Sorry. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Fantastic. You're sorry. I am, lady. The name is Rosangela. Will you remember me now, or do I need to do a little dance as well? Hey, relax. I'm just doing my job. Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Really? Yes, really. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. Um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela's kind of a mouthful, you know. 
All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. Home, thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes. I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. Some kind of motivational poster. It's the security guard for the hospital. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's... I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. Not really. Oh? Nothing's really changed. Her body might have been alive, but her mind certainly wasn't. That's a pretty severe attitude, wouldn't you say? Maybe. But if she weren't alive, as you say... Why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? Habit, I guess. It was a place to go every week. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. Okay, I am this close to leaving. Why am I here? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. 
Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. If auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming, her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. So what should I do? Right now, nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in anytime. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure.